Okay, so you're making a game and want to test it on your player. But with everything happening in VR, it can be impossible to have a good understanding at what's going on. But what if I told you there was a solution to watch replay of your user, get comprehensive data about their session, know if your game meets your objective, and much more. All of this in just a few clicks. So in today's video, I have the pleasure to showcase a free tool called Cognitive 3D. We are going to learn how we can easily set it up and use it. But I am also super proud to announce that Cognitive3D has agreed to collaborate with me on this video. So if you want to learn more about it, you can have a look at their website in the description below and try their SDK. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so how can we get data from our player? To show this to you, I'm going to use this simple VR project. Some of you might recognize it. This is the game we made together on the 10 episode tutorial series on how to make a VR game. It is a simple VR escape game that features some basic interaction with a narrative story. Now, anyway, let's get started with our connective 3D setup. First, I'm going to click on Windows, Package Manager. Then we can go at the top Click on this plus button, then on add package from git URL. Then the next step is to paste this URL, which you will find in the description down below, and which will allow us to download the Connective 3D SDK for Unity. And the package is also available as well in the Unity Asset Store, not just on the GitHub. Link in the description below. Now we can then click on add, and let's wait for the package to install. There you go, as you can see, the package is now installed. By the way, you can also go into the samples window over there and download two of the samples packages that are added for the Cognitive 3D Unity SDK. One is the Ready Room introduction scene to ensure HMD is calibrated. And another one is the demo scene that features some particular element of the tools. Now, in my case, what's behind now the package manager, as you can see, we have now a new window that has just opened for us. Now let me close the package manager. And this window is actually the project setup windows for the Cognitive 3D SDK. We can open the online documentation with this button, but in my case, I will just click on the next. There you go. So now the next step is to add the developer key, which you can find on the Cognitive 3D dashboard. For this, let's click on open dashboard here. As you can see, this should open a new Windows on your web browser, where you can just sign in to Cognitive 3D. There you go. So once you have signed in or created a new account, you should see this Windows popping up with your developer key. So we can just click here to copy it, then go back to Unity, and we can simply paste it over there on the project setup windows. Next, we can click on validate. There you go. As you can see, it has correctly found my credential from the developer key. There you go. We can now click again on next. And here, this is an important Windows. Okay. So in this Windows, as you can see, we can choose the VR SDK that is associated with our project. Now, let me click on OK on this Windows. And as you can see, if you are running with the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit, like me, you can check here the default XR SDK. Now, down below, if you are using SteamVR, you can choose this one. If you are using the Oculus integration, you can use this one. And as you can see, Cognitive 3 supports all of the major VR SDK. Now, in my case, because this project is running on the Unity XR Toolkit, I will just make sure that default is selected and then just click on Next. There you go. This will just take a few seconds. But then we need to set up the scene. So in my case, I'm simply going to click on the Quick Scene Setup here. Then we can click on Next. And here we need to reference the main camera that we are using. Now, in our case, the main camera is located under here the XR origin. So we can simply drag the main camera over here on the HMD. For the left hand, I'm going to drag the left controllers. And for the right hand, I'm going to drag the right controllers. There you go. Then it is very important. You can click here on Setup Controllers Game Object. Now, by doing so, if we go to the right controller, for example, as you can see, it will add a dynamic object component. Now, that's something that we will talk about later, so don't worry about it for now. And let's just click on Next. There you go. For the next step, as you can see, Cognitive 3D wants us to export the geometry of our scene. So I'm going to click on Export Scene Geometry. Beautiful. And we can then click on Next. And finally, on Upload, you can press on OK. 
And there you go. Now, by doing this, we will upload to Cognitive 3D the geometry of our scene, which will be very important for the replay later on. Okay, and just like this, Cognitive 3D is already set up for our project. This is really magic. Now, let's just click on Close. By the way, you can reopen this project setup windows by going to Cognitive 3D at the top and then clicking on Project Setup, just like this. Now, believe it or not, but with this current Cognitive 3D setup, we can already gather some player's data and watch the player's replay of our game. Don't believe me? Let's find out if this works by going here, clicking on maximize the window and clicking on play to find out. And there we go. Now I just finished to have a PlayStation of this awesome game that we made together. But while I was playing, Cognitive 3D was gathering some data about the game that will be super important for us. So let me show you how we can see this data already. For this, let's go at the top, Cognitive 3D, and let's reopen the Cognitive 3D dashboard by clicking on Open Web Dashboard. Okay, so make sure here that your project is selected. There you go. Now, in my case, I'm going to click on Dashboard Classic. Then we can click on Scene. And as you can see, we can see the scene from our game directly here. If we select it, we can see the play session that just happens right now over there. So if we click on it, we can see a bunch of session properties. So this will give us some information about the app, about the device, about some metrics, about some sensor, for example, like the HMD Yaw, the participant height, the frame per second. But anyway, the coolest features is really down below. As you can see, we can have a look at the session timeline. So we can see when the session started, when the player equipped the VR headset, when the controller lost tracking, but also when the session ended and for which reason. But that's not all, because if we go back at the top, and then that we click on View Session in Scene Explorer. As you can see, we can have a look at the current scene of our game. There you go. But that's not it. If we zoom a little bit and that we click on Play down below on the left side. There you go. As you can see, while we were playing, Cognitive 3D was actually recording the position of your hands and head to replay the user session inside the dashboard. That's really awesome. Now, just like this, you can see here me moving inside my game, right? But that's not it. We can also see the different input of the players here on this side. For example, you can see me moving the left joystick or grabbing over there. And we can also have a look at where the player looked at in our scene with this nice looking heat map. Now, that is so cool. Okay, so now that we can get data about the player, watch replay and see him move in the static scene, how can we get data from object that the player can interact with? And this is possible with another great tool from Cognitive 3D, the dynamic object. Let me show you. Okay, so back into my game. In my case, the player can interact in my gate with some of these objects. For example, the little cube that we have here, the player can grab it as well for the gun. And I've placed all of these objects under here, the interactable. We can see them all here. So to get data about all of these interactable, what I'm going to do is select them all right there. Click on Add Components and add a dynamic object component. Now, as the name suggests, this is component from Cognitive 3D, which will allow us to get metrics from these interactable. And as you can see, by adding the dynamic object, we can get a unique ID source from all of these objects. And we have a bunch of information to export the mesh and send data snapshot. But anyway, once you have created dynamic object, you can export their mesh to the dashboard by going to Cognitive 3D, Dynamic Object. And there you go. As you can see, we can have a look at all of the dynamic object in our scene. By the way, during the setup, we actually added two dynamic object components already on our scene on the right controller, which is on the right end of the XR player and on the left controllers. So that's why these two elements were already tracked in time. Now, anyway, what I'm going to do is click here on the top left corner to select all of the dynamic object in our scene. And I will just make sure to upload them all by clicking on upload here, selected meshes. Yes, export selected meshes. Okay, 
There you go. Now, as you can see, all of the dynamic object have been exported and uploaded. So we can close this windows. And now let's write some event using the dynamic objects. Now, if you want to add custom event when interacting with one of these dynamic objects, it is super simple. So let me show you. For example, let's select this little cube on the top and I'm going to click on add component and add a component of name record grab event. Now, the goal of this component will be to write some data when the players grab or release the object. So for this, let's go at the top and write using unityengine.xr.interaction.toolkit. We can also write using cognitive 3D. There you go. Now I'm going to need two variables. First, a private reference to the XR grab interactable, which I can call grab interactable, and then a private reference to our dynamic object, which I will also call dynamic object. There you go. Now we can get the grab interactable with get component of type XR grab interactable, and we can also get the dynamic object in the same way with get component dynamic object. Beautiful. Now everything is referenced in our game. Now we simply need to add some data when we start to grab or release the object. For this, we can create two functions, a public void record grab function that will take as a parameter a base interaction event args that we can call args. There we go. I'm going to copy and paste this function down below, but this time rename it record ungrab or maybe record release would be much better. There you go. Now we can hook these two function to the grab interactable when we grab or release the object by doing grab interactable dot select entered dot add listener record grab. Now let's do the same, but this time when we select exit it and add as a listener the record release. Beautiful. Now every time that we grab or release the object, these two functions will be called and now we can use them to begin recording some stuff on our dynamic object. And this can be super easily done by doing dynamic object that begin engagement. Now with this begin engagement, we can write any data that we want, as you can see. But I'm going to keep this simple by simply writing grabbing. There you go. Now we can do the same in the record release, but with dynamic object and engagement grabbing. Beautiful. And that's basically it. Now with this component, we should be able to trigger some custom events that are hooked to our dynamic object. That's awesome. Now we can go back to Unity. And by the way, this can work for any object. So let's maybe copy this component. And let's say that we want to test it as well on the little pistol over there. I'm simply going to paste this component as new. There you go. And now let's test how this works by clicking on play. And there you go, after a PlayStation where I've grabbed the cube on the left and the little pistol, let's see if this shows on the dashboard as well. So there you go, if we go back to the scene, there you go, after waiting a little seconds, we can see the second session that we just did right now, and if we click on it, now down below, as you can see in the session timeline, we have the event that we just made that are also showing here. So we can see when we grab here the little cube, when we release it, we can also see the grabbing of the pistols and the duration it took. Now that's just awesome, but there is so much more to show you. For example, if you click here now on dynamic object, we can have a look at all of the dynamic object that we've added on our game. For example, if we also select the cube, we can also have a look at where the player gazed upon this dynamic object, which is super nice. And that's not it, cause let's go back to our session, then go to our scene and view session in scene explorer. There you go. And now if I click on play, because we've added these objects as dynamic objects, as you can see, they also are recorded inside the replay, which is so cool. 
and I hope this gives you an overview of the power of these tools. Now, anyway, I just want to show you one last thing because now we can record some event with the dynamic object. But more generally speaking, you can also record some event on anything super easily. So just to give you a kind of quick example, I have here on my scene a control room trigger zone. So this is basically just a collider which is there to check if the player enters the control room. But what if we wanted to also add an event when the players enter this zone? So let me just show you. If we click on add component, I'm going to create a new component called record custom event. And you will see this script is very simple. Let's write at the top using cognitive 3D. And I'm going to add as a variable a public string event name. We can remove the start and the update function. And instead, I'm going to add a public void called write event. Now, this script will be super easy because what we can do to write a custom event is do custom event. We can give it the name custom event and do new custom event with our event name. There you go. So as the name suggests, this will just create a new custom event that we can then just write inside the dashboard when the players enter the trigger zone, for example. And here I'm just giving the event name text, but you can just pass any data that you want to send. And once you are happy with your event, you can just send it to the dashboard with custom event dot send. Beautiful. Now let's go back to Unity because it is already finished. I can write for the event name inside control room. And I can just hook this record custom event to the trigger zone that I've made inside the tutorial series by clicking on plus button, drag the record custom event there, and then go to record custom event, write event. And there you go. Now, when the players will enter this trigger zone, it will write the custom inside control room event to the dashboard. And there you go, if we have a look at the latest PlayStation, let's see if this fire or custom event properly. And there you go, as you can see, it worked. The custom event happened. So when the player went inside the control room, we can see here this new event show inside control room at 1 minute and 32 seconds. That is so cool. And there you go, guys. I hope that with this short tutorial, you are getting a glimpse at the power of Cognitive 3D. Now, I believe that it is one of the coolest VR tools that I've seen, but there are so much more that you can do with it. You can, for example, add custom satisfaction pool in your game, track way more data and objective, but also add custom sensor like heartbeat. Now, big shout out to Cognitive 3D for sponsoring this video. And thank you for watching till the end. Have a nice day. See you soon. Bye bye.